This is definitely a horror movie that doesn't dare to make a real ghost. The movie is based on true events and is full of judgment on humanity. 2024's latest horror movie Des Teufels Bad. The story begins with a woman, seizing the moment when no one is around, stealing an infant still in its swaddling clothes. The cries of the baby do nothing to awaken her conscience. The woman then ventures deep into the mountains, standing atop a peak, feeling an unprecedented calm within. In the next moment, she throws the baby down the waterfall and rushes down the mountain without looking back. She's in such a hurry because she needs to die. Inside a castle, the woman confesses her sins to another. As the door closes, the darkness within human nature begins to grow and spread. In a small town, a newlywed couple is celebrating their wedding. The bride, Agnes, who has traveled far from home, sits on a bench as her mother-in-law undoes her hair and places a headscarf on her, then hands her a straw doll symbolizing fertility and prosperity. Agnes has now completed her transition from maiden to wife. Before the ceremony is over, her husband, Wolf, blindfolds Agnes, promising her a surprise. But as the blindfold is removed, Agnes is stunned to find that the mansion she imagined is actually a dilapidated house on a hillside. Not wanting to upset Wolf, she forces herself to stay calm and begins planning their future. Since her mother-in-law is a well-known local landowner, the grand wedding celebration continues into the night. However, when Agnes goes to find Wolf, she accidentally discovers him embracing another man, leaving her with a vague sense that something is wrong. Before leaving, Agnes's brother had given her a small piece of a human finger a gift that filled Agnes with joy. According to local customs, placing the severed finger of a sinner under the bed guarantees that the couple will conceive. After bidding farewell to her brother and mother, a night out exclusively for the couple kicks off. Unexpectedly, Wolf finishes quickly, leaving Agnes questioning her own allure. The next morning, Agnes is led by the villagers to the family's fish pond. But along the way, she loses her way. Following eerie signs in the forest, Agnes stumbles upon the village's execution grounds. Here, anyone who commits a crime is subjected to the most severe punishments, and their misdeeds are illustrated and posted on signs for all to see. The brutal punishments depicted fill Agnes with dread. After some time, Agnes collects herself and goes to work at the fish pond, but her mother-in-law shows no mercy to the newcomer, assigning her the dirtiest and most exhausting tasks. During the distribution of rations, when a worker with a large appetite asks for an extra piece of bread, the kind-hearted Agnes gives it to him without hesitation. However, her miserly mother-in-law quickly snatches it away, chastising Agnes for being too soft-hearted. Little does Agnes know. A disaster sparked by her good intentions is looming, desperate to conceive a child. She secretly cuts off the fingers or toes of a sinner under the cover of night, kissing them reverently before placing them under the bed, convinced that this will fulfill her wish. But despite Agnes's advances, Wolf remains indifferent. Soon, the sound of his snoring fills the room, leaving Agnes feeling deeply disappointed. The next day, her mother-in-law takes Agnes to the creek to wash clothes, where they unexpectedly encounter a neighbor who has been unable to conceive. Her mother-in-law makes a cutting remark. <laughs> Reflecting on Wolf's indifference, the words sting Agnes deeply. In that era, having children was every woman's duty. Feeling guilty for not having yet won Wolf's favor, Agnes spends each night praying devoutly to a pile of stones, determined to prove her worth to her mother-in-law. Agnes gets up early to labor at the fish pond. Unbeknownst to her, this is a dangerous task, where one misstep could leave her trapped in the mud. Seeing a pregnant woman working hard, the kind-hearted Agnes rushes over to help. But as the eerie remains of a goat's skull are unearthed, it seems that misfortune begins to entwine itself with Agnes. Late one night, a frantic knock on the door awakens them. Upon learning that a villager is in trouble, Wolf rushes out. After some hesitation, the curious Agnes decides to follow and see what's happening. To avoid being discovered, she extinguishes her torch and moves quietly. By the faint light, she recognizes that the hanged man is the same one who was flirting with Wolf on their wedding night. Seeing the love of his life die tragically in their home, Wolf's expression betrays deep sorrow, a sight that pierces Agnes's heart. The next day, the townsfolk gather in the church to listen to the teachings of the preacher. In this town, the souls of those who commit suicide are condemned to eternal unrest. The only path to redemption is to commit a sin and pray devoutly beforehand. This fills Agnes with terror. The following day, while working, a pregnant woman asks for two pieces of bread to satisfy her hunger, but to avoid angering her mother-in-law. Agnes grits her teeth and refuses. This act goes against her kind nature, and in her frustration, 
She vents her anger on the bushes, the long-standing psychological pressure pushes Agnes to the brink of collapse. <laughs> After overhearing a conversation between her mother-in-law and Wolf, Agnes becomes even more convinced that she is worthless in this household. She longs to have a child of her own, but despite all her efforts, Wolf refuses to be intimate with her. Overwhelmed by self-doubt, she feels trapped in a mire. Even finding herself briefly envying the women who were executed at least their souls found redemption in the end. Desperate to save herself, Agnes drags her exhausted body back to her parents' home and falls asleep in the stable. However, as the saying goes, a married daughter is like spilled water, no matter how much they might not want to, her parents have no choice but to send her back according to custom. Kim. Kim. With Wolf and her brother working in unison, Agnes is eventually brought back to the oppressive home that weighs so heavily on her. The prolonged depression caused her to suffer from depression, and in order for Agnes to regain her health, her mother-in-law recommended that she visit the clinic for treatment. The quack runs the hairs through her cervical vertebrae and instructs Agnes to simply keep pulling on the hairs in the future to get rid of the blues. However, even as the wound festers, Agnes's condition shows no sign of improvement. One day, on her way home, Agnes unexpectedly finds an unattended infant. Out of kindness, she takes the baby home, but her mother-in-law scolds her for taking someone else's child without permission, and Wolf insists that the baby be returned to its parents. Though Agnes feels a deep reluctance as she looks at the infant, her reason eventually wins out, and the baby is returned to its rightful parents. As the flicker of hope dies once more, Agnes's world plunges into darkness. How terrifying can a woman who has lost her sanity be? Seizing a moment when no one is looking, she tastes rat poison, savoring it slowly. Having lost all hope in life, Agnes sneaks out at night and swallows the poison. Fortunately, due to her inexperience, she takes a small dose, just enough to narrowly save her life. Determined to die, Agnes doesn't give up and persuades Wolf to summon a priest for her. In her mind, confessing to a priest will bring peace to her soul. While Wolf is out, Agnes takes the poison again, but as fate would have it, the priest is away. Learning of the situation, Agnes decides to delay her death and informs Wolf about the poison. With Wolf's help, Agnes narrowly escapes death once more. However, unable to die, Agnes becomes a shell of her former self, a walking corpse, to lift her spirits. Wolf, acting on his mother's advice, sends Agnes back to her family. With the loving care of her mother and brother, Agnes slowly begins to recover. Unbeknownst to her, she eventually regains the ability to walk normally. But one morning, Agnes bids a final farewell to her sleeping family and swiftly leaves the house. In her heart, a grand scheme is brewing to save her soul. Agnes is resolved to take a risk and commit a grave sin. First, she deceives a child into leading her, then waits for the boy to close his eyes in prayer. Without a moment's hesitation, Agnes kills the boy. Afterwards, she rushes to the castle to confess, where she is forced to cut her hair and don the white garb reserved for sinners. What awaits her is a profound interrogation of her soul. Facing the priest, Agnes begins her confession, leaving out no detail as she recounts everything. Moved by the sincerity of Agnes's repentance, the priest absolves her soul, declaring that whether in life or death, her soul will be spared torment. Having found redemption, Agnes descends into madness. A few days later, new notices appear in the village's woods, depicting Agnes's crime of killing the boy. According to tradition, the villagers will sew Agnes into a donkey's hide, then drag her through the streets to serve as a warning to others. After the ritual is complete, they cut her free from the donkey hide and take her to the execution grounds. Seeing his wife appear, Wolf is overcome with emotion and tries to rush forward to save her, but the crowd holds him back. Before long, the executioner places a white hood over Agnes's face, but in the face of death, Agnes remains calm, even humming a familiar lullaby. With the swift fall of the sword, the gentle song abruptly ends. People rushed forward eagerly to taste the fresh blood, then began to dance joyfully, turning the entire scene into a celebration. In 17th and 18th century Europe, those who wished to commit suicide would often choose to kill someone first and then confess. They believed that only by sincerely repenting before a priest could they cleanse their sins and enter heaven. Without committing the sin of murder, they could not repent, and their souls would be condemned to eternal unrest after death. 
Most of these individuals were women, and their victims were often children. In the German-speaking regions alone, over 400 such cases have been recorded. The true devil has always lurked within the human heart. For personal gain, people often commit horrifying acts. May everyone guard the purity within their hearts and hold on to their kindness.